make sure you subscribe to this channel and like this video. Like, 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 like. And I hope you enjoyed this video. What's up, you guys? So today I'm coming back to you with another review of the have and the have nots. Y'all, I'm just going to get straight into it because this episode really didn't do anything for me. If it did something for you, let me know. So, first of all, the episode started off where it left off last week with Jeffrey and Justin in the jail house basically fighting, wrestling with each other. You know, Justin told him, I gave up everything for you. And, you know, Justin is really, he really done fell over heels for Jeffrey. And Jeffrey, of course, really isn't into him like that. So when Jeffrey got ready to tell him, you know, like, I never want to talk to you again. Take me back to my cell. Don't never say nothing to me. It is what it is. That's when Justin got a little more violent. But, of course, David Harrison walked in and broke everything up. So... You know, nothing really happened. David kind of asked Justin, why are you on my son? He basically like, well, this inmate was getting rough. You know, he was out of line. And D David Harrison looked at him and was like, hold on, you decide police officer that came to my house. You know, so what's really going on? Jeffrey basically told his dad, like, you know, he wasn't up fighting me. I was getting rough with him. You know, basically trying to take up for Justin, which I would not have. I think he would have to get fired, but... Justin and Jeffrey needs each other. Well, really, Jeffrey needs Justin more than anything because his mom has the cameras that was pointed outside Candace's house. And plus, he's in jail, so he needs someone. You know, his mother is against him, and there's really nothing his dad can do. As we see, you know, I thought his dad had a lot of pull. His dad probably have a lot of pull in different areas, but as far as the justice system and stuff down there, his mom has the pull, so... Basically, Jeffrey is kind of messed up. He really is. So, you know, that really didn't do nothing for me. It was kind of boring kind of going in. But that's how it started, and that's what happened between them. So when they got ready to sit down, Jeffrey basically told his dad that, you know, he's messing off with Justin. He's not in love with him or nothing like that. But, you know, they mess off from time to time. He let his own father know that Justin had a wife and that his mother recorded them and exposed him to Justin's wife. He also told his dad that his mom was the one who had him put in jail. She told the judge that he killed, um, what's the boy's name? What? Quincy. He killed Quincy. So, Quincy did or whatever and him and Candace killed him. So, he's in jail. I personally don't think he's finna get out anytime soon. Hopefully, he does. So, from there, the episode went to Benny and Mitch arriving at the hospital. They basically arrived at the hospital so Benny could go see Veronica to go check on her. Y'all, Veronica has truly and really fell in love with Benny. She told him, you did something for me no one else would have done. Not my husband, not my son. Not the girl that was staying in my house. You tried to save my life. No one else would try to save my life. So I really can tell that she has fallen in love with him. She stopped bringing back up how they had sex and how she lied. The sex was really good even though she told him it wasn't. You know, he, he grinned and smirked like, I know my sex is good. You didn't have to tell me. I knew you was lying. But in a way, it almost seems as if he's kind of falling for Veronica. Again, you know, not to say that he's falling in love with her because she's absolutely head over heels in love with him. But what I'm saying is you can kind of tell that his conversation is genuine with her. He really came to check on her. You know, he didn't ask her for the truck or whatever. And she kept on him. Is there anything that I can do for you? Anything, just name it. He was like, no, there's nothing. Are you sure anything? So I know he's going to eventually ask her. And Mitch keeps telling him, you know, ask cause she got the money. It'll be more better for you to get it from her than my uncle and my family. Which I think the tables are going to turn and there's going to be a big twist to that. I think it's not going to be better. I think, you know, Benny will have his chances getting it from those people and paying them back. Because Veronica has 
she's already crazy mentally and she's very controlling so once she give him that money i believe that she's gonna like she crazy as hell y'all let's not act like we don't know what she capable of she all binged up in the head right now love it but look my crazy as hell so to me i think it'd be better for him to go through mitch family and get the money but hey he's gonna end up asking veronica because she's gonna end up probably giving him that plus more knowing her he's probably gonna ask for a truck and she probably gonna call him and say hey go to this location this is your whole new tow yard probably a fleet line of trucks and he's gonna be like oh my god you know i guarantee it's gonna go past more than a truck because she she's worth more than just buying someone allows a truck you know so i see her doing bigger things than just a truck so basically he you know kind of saw her and they sat there and they talked and you know she was happy and um they he kind of saw her and she, before he left she basically asked him could you go by my house and pick up a few items for me because they said I can't leave the hospital. So I need some clothes, honey. You know, I can't be sitting up here in this old hotel rag with this bad wig on. Oh, baby, I need a new wig. I need some shoes. I need a makeover. Could you please bring my stuff? So he finally agreed to go. And that was the, basically the end of their conversation. Oh, yeah. Before he left, she said that she had a house guest there. And he, you know, asked who was the house guest. And she said it was basically... <coughs> Excuse me, Jeffrey's um fiance. And he was like, Isn't Jeffrey gay? No, he's not gay. My son's not gay. And he was like, I'm pretty sure he's gay. He tried to kiss me. And she was like, What? Tell me what happened. You know, you can tell me anything. And he was like, Well, basically, you know, he showed up to my door. He tried to kiss me and I hit him. She was like, Well, I hope you hit him hard. And he was like, Veronica, that is your son. She was like, So he shouldn't be trying to kiss a man. You know, and let me let me talk about that for a second. And I'm glad Tyler Perry put that in his show because it is a lot of parents like that, especially black parents, you know, Christians and all other things like that that do not want their sons to be gay and they treat their children differently and be so mean, belittle them and just because they're different, you know. We all are different. I'm fat you might be skinny, you know. I like weave even though my hair long. And you probably like your regular short hair, which is okay. Everyone is different, but I don't condone anybody bashing someone because their sexual preference is different or their hair or their color or their weight, anything. I just think that's a whole bunch of bullshit. But unfortunately, we do live in a day where people hate each other for many different type of reasons. So, you know, I understand why he put that in his show, but it's like, oh my gosh, she has not got the damn point yet. Your son is gay. Get over it. Then you will lock him up in a jail. He's with other men. Like, I don't think that would be the place you would want to put him. You know, not trying to be fun. I'm just being for real. I, I don't know. But that's all that happened with that. So it went from there. And I know the crier, Mrs. Crier and Hannah, they was at Hannah's house. I believe that was at Hannah's house or Mrs. Cryer's new house. Anyway, they both in Mrs. Cryer's house. So, they basically was sitting down talking. And she basically asked Hannah, why didn't you go on a date, you know, with Derek, the guy that fixed the um, sink and stuff. And, you know, she basically was like, I'm not ready to go on a date. You know, it's just not that time right now. So, I really don't want to go on a date. And Mrs. Cryer, Miss Catherine Cryer kept pushing her to let her know, like, he's a good dude. I think you would like him. All of this and all of that, but still, Hannah just doesn't want to be involved. Hannah does not want to be involved at all, but... At the end of the conversation, Mrs. Cryer kind of convinced Hannah to go on a date. You know, she was like, look, I'm going to call him to come pick you up at this certain time. And if I got to be there to push your ass out the house, it is what it is. So, that goes back to what I said last week. I honestly believe, and it just keep hitting me, I believe that he's going to be Candace's daddy for some weird reason. I know I had one of my subscribers that put in my comment, they think that it could be David because David had a bad a very very bad um past and you know he's a little troublemaker in the past and stuff and i said yeah that could be true i thought about that that'd be a good spin too which could be true but how would 
Hannah ever see his body unless in some type of way they end up dating. And then when I thought back about when David was with the um the girl he worked with, I remember him having his shirt off and for some reason I don't remember him having a tattoo, but we know they always can add stuff later. But I really believe he's going to be Candace's daddy because it's like they're pushing their relationship too, too hard. And the last relationship Hannah was kind of pushed into, it didn't work out well. When it was trying to have, when it was time to have sex, she kind of was, oh, I don't want to have sex. And now we know why, because she was raped, you know, so she's not easily wanting to just lay down with people. It kind of throws her back somewhere. So I think she's going to end up falling for this dude because he's very charming. He has a lot going for itself, but it's going to be a twist to it, y'all. It's going to be a twist. It's going to be a twist. Let's just wait. Okay, you guys. So after Benny left the hospital, him and Mitch then drove over to Veronica's house to get her things. When he arrived there, of course, Melissa was there in her robe and a nice little lingerie set, honey, with some bad little heels. So she was very cute walking around. You know, her attitude has changed so much, which it should have because she really was too nice from the get-go. Like, she was way too nice. I know she was trying to get things done for her family, but ever since her father died, honey, she's like, it's over. I got the worst attitude. Screw this baby. Screw you, Okay. So basically, Wyatt and Mitch walked into the house and she really was throwing herself on the both of them, asking them, do they think she's sexy? And you know, off top, Mitch was like, hey, yeah, you sexy, you know. So Benny and her walked up to Mrs. Harrison's room and she kept throwing herself at Benny and they started making out in Mrs. Harrison's room. So I think they're going to end up having sex in Mrs. Harrison's room, so... I don't know how that's going to go because Melissa is throwing herself. Well, I don't think she necessarily liked Benny because she also was throwing herself at um, Mitch as well. So I think it doesn't matter. I think she just needs to feel sexy. That's what she said. You know, she has not felt sexy in a while. Been sitting around in the house, you know, trying to get him to look at her. And he's, of course, he's not going to look at her, him being Jeffrey because Jeffrey is gay. So now she's to the point where she's going to do what she is going to do to make her happy, whether it makes you happy or mad. You know, so I think she's probably going to be throwing herself in any man that come past her, to be honest, because that's where she's at right now. She just wants love. She don't care where she get it from. She just wants some affection. She wants to feel like a lady. You know, she's been throwing herself at Jeffrey too long, so... I don't necessarily think she's going to like Benny like that, but I think she just used him sexually. And I think somehow that that's going to come to play between him and Veronica. And that's probably how Veronica is going to switch teams on him. He's pro She's probably going to end up giving him the money or giving him more than what he originally asked for. And some type of way, Melissa's going to be like, you know, I screwed your man, right? Mm, yep, I had him in your bed, right? So, that's pretty much all that happened there. He went to go get her clothes, and Melissa and him started making out. You know, I believe if Mitch was up there, too, that all three of them would have did it together. Because she really was throwing herself on top of both of them. You know, she wants any type of attention. So, so basically what happened next was Brandon and the new next president was basically just riding down the road talking and Brandon, you know, Brandon is now starting to, I think Brandon realized what I realized, that this dude is gay, okay? It is what it is. He gay, y'all. That's the reason why he's going out of his way to want Candace, someone he really doesn't like. I don't even think he's attracted to her. I think he's going out of his way, and she's a very attractive girl. What I'm saying is, I don't think that he likes women. I think that he's using women as a front, just like the kids he has kids, so now he wants this first lady. And he knows that they're not in a real relationship, and he's really going to be controlling her. It's really going to be a business and partnership type of deal. You know, you watch my back, I watch yours. It's really not about, I love you, I love you, let's try to make this work. It's really about, I need a first lady, because that would look better for me to be the president if I had a first lady. Some episodes back, I felt that he was coming on to Brandon. And evidently, Brandon felt it too. So now Brandon is stepping out and he's coming on to the soon-to-be president. 
And he's basically like, look, I move your schedule around. You have free time. We can hang out tonight. And he was like, oh, I got free time for night. He was like, yeah, you can have your little night date. He was like, oh, is she pretty? And he was like, she, I'm thinking about me and you. Why can't me and you just hang out and get drunk? He was like, well, I'm kind of tired tonight. Maybe next time or whatever. So I can tell that Brandon is actually falling for the soon-to-be president. And when he actually sat down with one of his Kylie's co-workers. I don't know her name. I just know she had a white blouse. It's like a face in a crowd to me because she hasn't been on enough episodes yet for me to build characteristics and remember her like that. But basically, she knew from sitting down with him that was talking about Candace and she knew then, hey, you like the president. You know, because he was like, he, he's all over Candace. He just can't stop thinking about her and talking about her. And she's like, so you want him to think about you? Okay, so Brandon has completely fallen head over heels for the soon-to-be president. I personally think they're going to hook up. I think that they're going to have a relationship. I think that Candace is eventually going to go with him because that's her money-making scheme, and she's all about the money-making schemes. And, you know, it'll be easy money-making. Just sit there, be pretty, wave your hand, you know, act like first lady, act like we together. And behind the scenes, him and Brandon is going to be in a very serious relationship. I guarantee you that's coming. So, Candy showed up to the hotel to meet Erica and the new girl that we was introduced to last week named Gia, who is now Candy's prostitute. And I guess Erica is the prostitute manager i don't know y'all i don't know nothing about the prostitute life but i know candace is the pimp erica is the do girl to go get the clothes and stuff like that and el dilly g is going to be the whore so basically they met up and it really like i said this episode really didn't do anything for me it wasn't no jush to it like girl bitch none of it so <laughs> Basically, they met up and she kind of was giving them orders like, well, you know, I'm the boss and this is what you're going to do. You got your clothes for me. This, this, woo, woo, woo. Really, you know, she asked Erica, how does it feel that you don't have nobody out here watching your back? You know, she was like, it doesn't feel good and stuff like that. So, really, that was it. So, the, the prostitute Gia and Erica walked off and then two undercovers came up to arrest Candace and said that they had been watching her and she's under arrest for robbing someone. We don't know who she robbed yet. I'm sure they will let us know next week, hopefully, if they don't drag the damn episode out, 12 episodes, just find out what happened. So, really, that's all that happened with Candace. And I pretty much think that that is all that happened, period. I think that was it. Y'all, when I tell y'all this episode really didn't have any fire or flying, it just was, hmm, it was mild. It was a good show because I love the show. It just wasn't anything in it this weekend to make you be like, oh my God. But like I said, again, back to the president, I think him and Brandon is going to be in a relationship. And I think Candace eventually is going to accept it because she just got locked up. So she's going to end up accepting because he really is the only person that can help her out right now as far as taking her to the next level and getting her out of the line of crime. Now, Veronica can help keep her out of jail, but she can't get her out of the line of crime. No, I don't even think she would care to. So, basically, I think she's going to end up being the first lady, maybe next season or something. But I believe that the president and Brandon will be in a relationship. Oh, yeah, Wyatt. Wyatt. Justin showed up at the end of the episode. The last thing, Justin finally showed up to Wyatt's house. He broke into Wyatt's house with a damn crowbar, y'all. And he basically was threatening Wyatt, like, why is you texting him? You gonna stop texting him? You gonna let me know what y'all been doing here? And I stuff like that. Wyatt was like, you freaking crazy? Get out of my house. You're crazy. <laughs> That's how Wyatt acts. I'm sorry. That's just how he... <laughs> That's how he reacts and acts on camera. So, basically, they got into a little altercation and... He lifted the crowbar up to get ready to hit Wyatt in the head. Wyatt blocked it, so there start tumbling and tossing. So, the episode left off with Wyatt and Justin actually into a physical fight over Jeffrey. And like I said last week, I think Wyatt may be bisexual. I think he might have some type of feelings for Jeffrey. He does not like to see. Now, this is why I say this. We have found out that Jeffrey has been, not Jeffrey, Wyatt has been molested. So, that kind of shows you why he 
throws gay stuff off so hard. Why he's always been so mean to Jeffrey. But have you ever noticed that no matter who Jeffrey is going with, Wyatt always has a problem with him having a boyfriend. When he was talking to Brandon, Wyatt had a problem. Kind of, sort of, it wasn't as big as a problem as it is now. But he was like, so who are you going? Who are you talking to? Who was that? You know, like, he really had a problem with Jeffrey being in a relationship. But he doesn't want to be in a relationship with Jeffrey. I think he really loves Jeffrey, you know. And I think the only reason he fell in love with the lady that was helping him from AAA, is, is that what you call it? Well, no, that's alcohol numbers. Well, whatever the hell 12-step program was, he fell in love with her because she was there and she was helping him. He probably isn't used to anyone helping him that doesn't want a handout. You know, everyone in their family is all about do for you, do for me, do for you, do for me. And probably was like that his whole life, you know. He has been through some stuff. He lost his sister, a lot of stuff. But I do believe that he really is in love with Jeffrey. So let's hope that Jeffrey, not Jeffrey, let's hope that Wyatt does not get killed. Because, I don't know, they're fighting and tussling and tumbling. And if he pulls out his gun, someone's going to get shot. So... There might be next, you know, they always throw stuff in like, oh my God, someone got shot on the last episode. You have to wait all these freaking months to find out who got shot. And then they won't tell you the season after that if the person dead or not. So, yeah, again, this episode really didn't do anything for me, but I want to come to you all and make a review like I should. So... I hope you guys like this week's episode. If you did or didn't, comment below. Let me know what you think of the episode. Let me know what you think of Wyatt and Jeffrey. Do you think Wyatt is in love with Jeffrey? Do you think that the soon-to-be president and Brandon will be in an undercover relationship while he is with Candace as his first lady? Do you think Hannah will ever finally find love? Comment below, you guys. Let this get this conversation started. And let's see what's going on. Bye.